Come on, come on, brother. Come on, brother. And it's good that you throw it away because now it's not going to no longer as well. Come on, brother. Just throw it away, brother. Come on, brother. Not for, not for us, but for God. For the Lord. Forget us. I don't give a damn about me. Do it for the Heavenly Father, brother. Do it for the Heavenly Father. We got songs 44 and 14. What's your name, brother? I'm Greg, man. Greg, yeah. all prisons on both sides. Everything that this brother was saying, does it make sense? Yeah. 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 I'm going to bring out some more precepts to further prove the point that you're an Israelite. Yeah. Bring it out, King. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 44, and verse 14. Thou makest us a byword. It's like yeah, a byword among the heathen. Hey. Right. It's like it real quick. When the heathen see us, they say, there go those niggas again. <laughs> there go those monkeys. They go that black porch monkey moon cricket. And they got a, a innumerable amount of bywords for us. Whether we stay here in America, guess what they're gonna call us, nigga. And when we go out there in Saudi Arabia, they're gonna call us what? Whatever they wanna call us. We go down to Africa, they're gonna and they'll call us sandings, like the brother said. We go down there in Africa, they say cotton. Cotton pick a nigga. We're not the same people. Right? So bring that out one more time, King. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 44, and verse 14. Thou makest us a byword among the heathen, a shaking of the head among the people. A shaking of the head among the people. Because you have to really consider, what do our people do to each other? How do they treat each other? Not good at all. Not good at all. So when other nations see that, they say, that's a shame. It is what it is. And they go inside their million dollar homes and laugh at us and watch movies about us. They watch a so-called black food. They watch uh, Baby Boy, Friday, Boys in the Hood. Yeah. See that? Root? You said what? That's right. And sometimes they like seeing that. Our, our blues, hey, they see that as comedy. And we see that as pain and tribulation. All right. You'd rather bring out Deuteronomy 20 to 68. Let's bring it out. All right. Now, you been to church, Greg? That's good though, that's good, that's good. We don't go to church either. We want to tell you why. The church is wicked. They're not going to tell you who you are. They don't give a damn about you. What they do, they only give a damn about who's in your wallet, right? They care about your money. Because that pastor, he needs a new hot oil, a hot, hot water tank. They ain't pull up to the damn church, to the congregation, in a Ferrari. <laughs> Loud as hell. And there you are in your Prius, scratching your head, Rolling up the windows because your AC don't work. Right. He doesn't give a damn about us. Bring it up. Bro, That's the devil. Can I say one thing? What's going on, brother? I mean, when I see you guys here, I was brought here because I, I want to. Oh, you, like you, you got to put my want... pass down a little. I can't hear you. No, I, I left my dishes at home, man. You got what? I left my dishes at home. Oh, but I was saying, I'm, I was blessed, man. I had a good depression and anxiety for like damn near five years to the mother pass. And all of a sudden, man, I prayed to the Lord every day, every night. And about three or four days ago, I woke up, it was gone. I was under that black hole. I'm happy again, I'm smiling again, I'm out again. I'm so, God bless me, man. I'm glad, I feel good. So, anything to do with religion, I wanna hear it. Oh, you don't religion. That's not religion. We're gonna prove it though. We have to prove it. Go to Sirach 17 and 11, right? Now, when people see the Bible, they see, they see the KJV, they see Holy Bible, they see the cross. The first thing in their mind is religion. Christianity. White man. White man. Blue-eyed devil. Blue-eyed sweet baby J. That's the first thing that's in their mind. So we're going to go to the books of right chapter 17, verse 11. To prove to you that this is not a religion. This is our culture. Bring it out to you. That them are the Israelites. He gave them knowledge and the law of life for what? For inheritance. 
canceled. He made an everlasting covenant with them and showed them his judgment. You read about that in Genesis 19, in Genesis 7. You read about all throughout scriptures. That's the point. All right? He made a covenant with the Israelites. Everybody can be an Israel. You understand? So let's further prove that. Go to Deuteronomy 20 to 68. All right? We're going to read a curse, and I'm going to ask you, which people fit that curse? All right, bring it up. Let's find out. This is the million dollar question. Some people will search their whole lives for the truth. They go to Buddhism, they go to Islam, they be a monk, they travel across the world looking for the signs, and looking to the stars, whatever. It's right there in front of you. Let's bring it out. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord will bring thee into Egypt again with ships. This is Moses speaking to his people, the Israelites. This is the KJV. You got a, that's where a holy Bible right there, right? That's right. right. Okay. By the way whereof I speak to thee. Now read it one more time and let's break it down. And the Lord shall bring thee to Egypt again with ships. No. You're familiar with Moses, correct? Yeah. What did Moses do for his people? Well, uh, to get out of Egypt, what did, what did him and his brother, what did they do? That's correct. Right, a thousand percent. They parted the Red Sea, and they left Egypt. Did he go back? Make a U-turn? No. No. But he said, what did he say? The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. He said, you're going to go back into Egypt again, but with ships. As we continue to read out the Bible in Psalms, Ecclesiastes, Songs of Solomon, you will never find that Israel went back to Egypt with ships. That word Egypt has a special meaning. We're going to search it out and break down what it means within the Bible. Brother, you got it? Exodus is like, that's fine. You can bring out Deuteronomy 5. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 6, and it reads thus. Don't lose this, Greg. Don't lose this, Greg. Check this out. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. No, the playpen. The land of Egypt. Play. The house of bondage. This is the what? The house of bondage. Egypt was known as the house of bondage. Because what were we doing in Egypt? We were slaves. You said it, brother. We were slaves. We built the pyramids. We built the pyramids and all that. Did the wait? Did that? Did that man's ancestors build the pyramids? No. We got burnt up in the sun. Can his wife build the pyramids? No. They can't build the pyramids. They already burn it up as it is. It's only like 60, 70 degrees. How much more if it was 80, 90 in Egypt? They would have passed out like flies. Yep. Bring it out. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Have y'all seen your world land? Have you seen it? Uh, 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 I haven't seen it. Uh, uh, Show me a brother. Y'all seen it? Uh, uh, uh. This isn't rehearsed. They literally haven't seen a homeland. The cameraman hasn't seen his homeland. I haven't seen my homeland. That brother hasn't either. And I don't know him, but I know he did it. Oh, that brother knows it was cool. See that? We know that for certainty. Bring it up. And there you should be sold into your enemy. Where? And there you should be sold into your enemy. There in this foreign land, you will be sold into your enemies. So, let me paint the picture for you, brother. Let's read it one more time. Reel it back. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord's going to bring you into slavery, captivity again. But how are you going to get to that new captivity? Go ahead. By the way, well, uh, my spake to thee, thou shalt see it no more again. You're not going to see your homeland again. And what? And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. And there you will be sold unto your enemies. Which man sold us? Which man sold us, brother? In America. In America. Yes. The white man, right? Right there behind. And he's right there. He did it. Alright? Yeah, his people. It is what it is. Alright? They did it. Alright? But the Bible said your enemies. So we have to consider him our enemies. Right? Oh, so let's keep that in mind, right? Therefore he can't be our neighbors. Bring it out. Bond men and bond women. Slave man and slave woman, let's take a pause. Let's look down here, brother. What do you see right there? Was that man a free man or a slave man? That man was a slave, that brother's a slave. That, see that? They sold us for bond men and bond women. Bring it out, brother. And no man shall buy you. And no man's gonna kick down the door and say you're free. No man did 
said that to us. How do we know? What's your last name? Crawford. Is that a white man's last name? Got it. You got it, right? Yeah. Hey, you got Cole Abbott Dukes. Williams, Jeffersons, Johnsons, you got all these so-called white last names up here. Right, that's proof that we're not free. Because we still carry their last names. But we denounce it. Right? His last name probably Crawford. His last name probably Jefferson or Johnson or Cole or Abbott. Right. So we reap the benefits. But we still reap oppression. Alright? So let's let's continue. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. Children of niggas. With the children of Israel. Moses. With the children of Israel in the land of Moab besides the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. See that? He's speaking to the children of Israel. As I said earlier, can everybody fit this? La -ah. La -ah. Can every can everybody can everybody on earth fit this verse? What we just read? All right, let's go. I'm going to read it one more time. This is Deuteronomy 29 and 1. Check this out, Greg. Check this out. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. Children of who? The children of Israel. Greg, who is he speaking to? The children of Israel. He's talking to the um, Jews. That's right. He's speaking to the Jews. Jews. And your ancestors, they went through what we just read, correct? Right, right. Now, if these are your ancestors and they're calling themselves Israelites, who would you be? Who would you be? I don't know, brother. Oh, let me say it one more time. If your ancestors went through all of these things and you come out the lords of your ancestors and they're calling themselves Israelites, who would that make you? That would make me as them. It's Israelite. And Israelite, you said it, brother. All right, hey, you said it. You got a Chinese baby, his father's going to be a Chinese man. Japanese baby, Asian baby, then East Indian baby, all their fathers will look just like them. And you look just like your forefathers. I can look at you. I can look at you. Hold on, brother. Don't lose track. Brother, I can look at you. I can look at you and say, okay, I know how the rest of your nation look. I can look at the white man and say, I know how the rest of his nation look. Their blood is going to show through their skin. They have no melanin. That's facts. I can bet a million dollars on that. It will be correct. So the point is, Moses is speaking to a certain group of people. Who should be who? The Israelites. Who are the Israelites today on earth? It's not, it can't be the white man because he doesn't fit what we read. So who would it have to be? Brother, I'm going to say it's going to be us. The it's going to be us. You said it. Right? Right. It, it, like the brothers, it didn't say black man, it didn't say African man, it didn't say any other byword that America gave us. But it did say the Israelites. We know that's our true nationality. That's our heritage, the Bible, the scriptures. Bring us up Baruch 3, uh, it's like a Baruch 3 and 9. The book, book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 9. It's for all y'all as well. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 9. Hear Israel, the commandments of life. He said, Hear Israel, the commandments of life. Give ear to understand wisdom. How happeneth Israel that thou art in thy enemy's land, that thou art wife's home. Right. But in the beginning, I want to touch on that real quick. Read it one more time, we're going to break it down. It's the book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 9. Hear Israel, the commandments of life. Y'all love God. Y'all love God. Y'all love God. Y'all love God. You love God, brother? Yes, man. I love God. I love the Lord, man. All right, all priests. All y'all love God? We do. Bring out 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. Let's prove it. Let's see if y'all really love God. All right, let's find out. All right, this is out the Bible. We're not going out of our own mind and out of our own heart. We're not going to wing it. All right, we didn't make up the scriptures last night. Everything we say is going to come out. The scriptures. This is all, thus saith the Lord. Book of First John. Yeah, that's that's to be five and thirty eight. Book of First John, chapter five, verse three. No. Well, this is the love of God. No, oh, y'all said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One verse, just one. You only got a minute for one verse. Go ahead. In the book of First John, chapter five, verse three. For this 
is the love of God. This is how you love God. That we keep his commandments. That, you what? that we keep his commandments. Follow my own heart. We keep his commandments. I do what I want. We keep his commandments. You got to keep his commandments, right? You have a child. You tell her to do something, you expect her to do it. That's her honoring and respecting you. Understand? So if the Lord told you to do X, Y, and Z, what are you to do it you going to do X, Y, and Z. Just like that. So with that, I have a follow-up question. Do y'all like pork? Do y'all like bacon? No. I, I don't know where you're going with that. Oh, what about you? You don't say nothing, brother. What about you? Uh, <laughs> you like pork? Why do y'all eat bacon, right? I am a all right, let's bring out one verse. One verse. God said you love God. To love God, you have to keep his commandments. Let's bring out Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof. The swine, although he's divided the hoof. And be cloven-footed. Cloven-footed. Yet he two of not the cub. He doesn't properly digest his meal. Therefore, he's what? He is unclean to you. He's clean. He is unclean to you. A little bit of salt, baby. He is unclean to you. A little bit of bleach. He is unclean to you. He is unclean to you. That's what God said. I didn't make that up. He didn't make that up. That's that said the Lord. So if I ask you after reading that verse, are you going to stop eating pork? What are you going to say? You said what? All right. Okay. Okay. But are you going to still eat it? It depends if it's fried hard. It depends if it's what? Fried hard. It doesn't. Uh, what, what about God? If he fried said that. Hey, now, now imagine your daughter saying that. You want to hear that? No, you don't want to hear that from her. See that? Get a high blood pressure and all that. Hey, we know it. Say it again, Otis, say it again. High blood pressure, all kinds of things. We still eat it. We see that? We still eat it. Does that mean it's a good thing? Does that mean you still eat it? No. If you like it, so if you tell your daughter to do something and she don't do it, what are you going to do? You're going to chastise her, right? If you don't do what God said, you're going to get chastised by God. I didn't, that, that's, that's it, the Lord. Y'all parents, y'all know how this works. The Lord, and we're his children. If we claim to be the children of God, that means we have to honor and do what he say. Bring that out of Proverbs 4 and 1. Bring it up. Ain't no oh, maybe or ifs. If the Lord said do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to make haste. I want my ass beat. You know, now the Lord. Well, well hold on. Wait a minute. Wait. Uh, see that? They don't find anything to be offended by. They found anything to be offended by. Just so they can... Ah, come on. Hey, man. They gonna still eat pork. That's what Jake do. They find anything to be offended by. Hey, ass is in the scriptures, man. See that? Oh, hey, I thought we'd be rolled in speech, yet not in knowledge. Yet not in knowledge. See that? Bring it up. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 1. Hear ye children, the instruction of a father. What he said? Hear ye children, the instruction of a father. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. You don't do nothing he say. You claim to be a child of God all your life. The Lord said do X, Y, and Z. I'll hold up. Wait a minute. That's what you're draw the line. Wait a minute. What about this? What about that? Why? I did this all my life. I don't give a damn, man. Bring it up. And attend to no understanding. You have to attend to no understanding. Go ahead. For I give you good doctrine, forsake you not my law. The Lord didn't say he's going to give you nasty, sticky doctrine. He's going to give you good doctrine. And the elder said, hey, the elder said it. And they still didn't want to hear it. You got a point? I'm a robot. Where y'all be at, brother? Where y'all be worshiping? This brother's going to give you the flyer. Right? We are every Friday and Saturday, Lord willing. I got it. I got it. All praises. Check out that information. That's the YouTube, the Instagram, the Twitter, the Facebook, the email. See that? Hey, you got the numbers on there as well. Call us. We're going to answer. You are willing. What's my name, bro? Okay. That's right. What's my name? You never tell me. It don't matter, though. All right, I'm yard down. I'm yard down. Okay, I'm going to definitely call, bro, because what you're talking about, what y'all talking about is real. It's real, but I'm not even, I don't know. I'm, just, I'm sleeping at the quiet left and right, and I need to learn, man. I need to get off of this. That's humble, hey man. That's humble. That's humble. Yeah, real. Yeah, give a clap to the owner, man. 
That's right. Oh, and you an Israelite. You an Israelite, gotta keep the commandments, gotta repent. Check out that flyer, Carlos. You know, we'll bring out some more pre uh, precepts. All right, brothers. You know, and here a little and there a little. You bring out what you can. What's both you are now? You from? I'm Puerto Rican. Puerto Rican, what about you? I'm Puerto Rican, you said what? African American. What about you? You don't know. Are we the same people though? Yeah. Why well, give me three different answers? I don't know Puerto Rican and African American. We are, we are, uh, we are say, you can say. They just, I'm gonna tell you like that. They separated us, they put us in different areas. Why were we separated? Uh, can I say something? Yeah. Hold, on, hold on, real quick, real quick. Let's bring out Baruch, chapter 2, verse 29. Because everything has to be done decently and in order. You don't go in the classroom and say, well, hold up, let me jump in front of the lesson. You don't go before the judge and say, hold up, I got a few accusations. Everything has to be done decently and in order. Right? If you love the Lord, you're going to love order, you're going to love the wisdom. That's good. Definitely gonna love the precepts. Bring it up. It's the book of Baruch, chapter 2 and 29. If you will not hear my voice, truly this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations where I will scatter them. Among who I will show what? Among the nations that I will scatter them. Right, we've been scattered. Right, we've been scattered from here to here, from Asia to Bithynia, damn Asia, damn Africa, South America. We've been scattered everywhere. Y'all listening? It's your nationality. Y'all gotta figure this out. Bring it up. I knew that they would not hear me. And they will what? That they will not hear me. Because it is a stiff neck people. Like in the land of their captivity, they shall remember themselves. See, our people are stiff neck. Our people are very, very stiff neck. You tell one brother at work, your brother got to work. They say, man, that's that bitch. <laughs> Shut up, beat. <laughs> <laughs> Eight, you know, he got the little lighter that's connected to his keys. He roll it up, starts sparking it, and smoking a blunt at you. Our people are very stiff neck. You can't do that right. So the Lord judged us as a result of that. Bring it out. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4 and 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and you shall be left few in number among the heathens, whether the Lord shall lead you. See that? That's played upon the tables. Does that make sense? That's a curse. Can everybody say, oh, I've been scattered amongst the nations? They can't say that because everybody has their own land. They're, everybody chilling in their own land. If they want to leave, it's of their own accord. Go to Asia. You're not going to run into a lot of East Indians. You're not going to run into a lot of white people. They're their own land chilling. They weren't scattered throughout the world, right, by the hand of their enemies. Go to Saudi Arabia. You're not going to run into a lot of white people. You're not going to run into a lot of so-called African Americans because that's their own land. They're chilling. Right? They weren't scattered by reason of transgressing the Lord's commandments. And that's the reason why we're here. By breaking the commandments of the Lord. Let's bring it up though. Bring out Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. Verse 15. Let's get it. Verse 15. Y'all believe in the Bible? Alright, let's bring it up. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If you don't listen to the voice of the Lord, your God. To observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So what? So come upon thee and overtake thee. See that? A curse is going to be upon our people. In other words, a dark cloud, if you will. A omen, right? Negative things are happening to us perpetually. Day in and day out, from generation to generation. That's what you call a curse. Let's show an example. Curse out the be in the city. Who's cursing the city? Us. Hey, brother, I can pull out my phone and go to, you know, and I see a notification that I say, you know, anything that's happening to us, right? Three, three people shot on the west side. And, and I, was, I was just about to say, that's not the white man, right? Five people shot in the gang shooting on the east side. When you see that, you don't think of the white man. You don't think about the East Indian man. The East Indian man ain't pulling out these guns, kind of shooting at each other. That's us. We're killing each other. That's what you call being a curse in the city, right? What's more evidence that we're cursed in the city? How are we living in the city? We living good? You living like those white men out there? You living like the East Indians? Ah, not at all, right? They got the money and you don't got nothing. You might as well, you might as well cut holes in your pockets. Bring it up. 
that Kershaw do be in the field. Who was cursing the field during history? If you look down here, that's further proof that we was cursing the field. That's further proof, brother. We were cursed in the field. Get our back broken in. Bring our Psalms 54 and 3. Right? Everything we say, we pull it out the scriptures. And notice how it lines up with history, how it lines up the real life. People say, prove that that Bible is real. We bring out the verse and look up around you. See how much it affects you. Bring it out, King. All right, the book of Psalms, chapter 54, verse 3, and it reads thus. The book of Psalms, chapter 54, and verse 3. For strangers are risen up against me. Who's over us in this society? Huh? The op. Well, well, in this society, which man, which nation is above the so-called black people? When it comes to financials, the white people, right? It's the reason you tell white people first. It's not the East Indians. Although they may be above you, they're not on the top of the totem pole. Bring it out. For strangers are risen up against me and oppressors. And what? And oppressors seek after my soul. They have not set God before them. These nations, they don't really believe in God. America does not believe in God. Guess what month it is today? June, also known as what? Pride Month. Is that of God? Is it God? They're not. We're going to prove it though. Well, we're not dealing with Juneteenth. That's not in the scriptures. That's not our culture. Neither are we free, and we're proving that we're not free. Let's bring it out. This Leviticus, you got it, King, 18. Excuse me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all not going to work. Give us one second. Bear with us. Leviticus chapter 18. Verse uh, 22, and it reads, Thou shalt not lie with mankind. What did he say? Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. No, it's good. It's, it's an abomination. Dance and clap when you see it. It is an abomination. It's an abomination. Now, some people may argue, that's the Old Testament. Let's go to Romans 1 and 25. People say that. People say, it's the Old Testament. It's the Old Testament. Bring this up. Come here. Come, come to the brother. Come to the This is still for y'all, too. Don't go nowhere. It's for everybody. We are the same people. Bring out Romans chapter 1 verse 25. Let's get it. We're going to go precept upon precept. Bring it out. It's the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 25. Who turned the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up into vile affections. God gave these people up to their own vile affections because they didn't want to serve them. Sorry, if you don't want to serve them, go ahead, do your thing. Go ahead. For even the women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Y'all pay attention because I had a question for y'all. Go ahead. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman. The man left the natural use of a woman. Go ahead. Born in the lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseen. That's nasty. Men with men working that which, uh, which is unseemly. Can you, somebody Google the word unseemly. We're going to show you what that word means. Right? Men with men working that which is unseen. It's not talking about them playing spades. They're playing 21. Right? That's talking about some nasty activities. See that? That's talking about some nasty ass activities. Alright? Who, who Googled it? Alright, you got it, King. Unseemly. Not proper or appropriate. Right? Improper. That's unseemly. Unseemly. See, that's not proper or appropriate in the eyes of God. That's why we say, hey, that's not of God. Pride Month is not of God. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 9, and it reads thus, The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them. They declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. How do y'all feel about sodomy and pride month? How do you feel about it? I hate that. I don't you don't care? You don't, you don't care? I have no preference. You have no preference? So if a thick, if a tall, homosexual white dude just say, hey babies, you, you, gonna, you gonna be okay with that? You kinda play with your babies and give them a pride flag? You gonna be okay with that? Nah. Nah. So you gotta have a preference. Right. You gotta be biased of some sort. Or else our mind will be overthrown. Bring us to right 39 and uh, 13. It's like at 46 and 13. 
Bruce Hart chapter 46 verse 13. Now people say, oh, you judge me. Thou shalt not judge. Bring out 2 Chronicles 19 and 2. We're going to prove all things according to the Bible. So right, 30, 46 uh, verse 10. Come on, this is the book of Sirach chapter 46 verse 10. That all the Jump down to verse 13. Come on. Verse 13. Samuel, the prophet of the Lord, the love of his Lord. Is Samuel, the prophet of the Lord. Go ahead. So, that's what I do. The love of his Lord established a kingdom and anointed princes of his people. So this kingdom was established, and he set up princes. Go ahead. By the law of the Lord, he judged the congregation. He what? He judged the congregation. He what? He judged the congregation. By the law of the Lord, he judged the congregation. So when people say, you can't judge me, we're going to judge you according to the Lord. If the Lord said, don't do this, do that, don't do this, and we're going to do that, and we're not going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do that, that said the Lord. So we have to have a preference. It has to affect us in way, shape, form, and fashion. Or else we just go with the flow. And all hell break loose. Next thing you know, your son wearing this dress, talking about, play with me, daddy, I want to be a Barbie girl. <laughs> you want to feel something, yeah, you shaking your head because you feel some type of way about it. So bring us to Mark chapter 30 verse 4. If you got kids, you going to want them to be the opposite gender? No, these are, these, I'm polyamorous now. My name is Greg, or my name is Sam Philippi. I just want to say, you ain't got to be politically correct up here. That's right. We ain't politically correct. In this society, they condition to be, you know, hey, don't speak your mind. Be accepting of everybody. That's what America pushed. Bring it out, King. Cyrac 34. That's right. In the book of Cyrac, verse 3. In the book of Cyrac, chapter 30, verse 3, and it reads thus. He that teaches his son grieveth the enemy. He that what? He that teaches the son grieveth the enemy. You teach your sons the right thing, you're going to grieve the enemy. Go ahead. Reading on. And before his friends, he shall rejoice of him. What is it after that? Though his father died, Yet he is though he were not dead, for he hath left one behind him that is like himself. See that? If you were to give up the ghost, Lord forbid, you're going to have sons that's moving in the same image and fashion as you. Right? You know how you want to direct your sons. And you know that you don't want to direct them in wickedness. Right. And y'all want kids one day, right? You going to watch your son be wearing a tutu with his nails painted, singing all the Nicki Minaj lyrics? That's the last thing you want. Right. Yeah, you want grandchildren, right? And that's what every person loves. Oh, I want grandbabies. Give me grandbabies. They can't have grandbabies. They, they, you know, they, you know, Ross touching. And then this for the sisters. You know, like, we always tell our sisters, y'all got to be careful. Because not only do y'all got enemies with the powers that be, y'all got the brothers that's gay that's envying y'all too. Cause they stereotyping the women. They try to imitate being women, dressing with the booty shorts, with they, you know what I'm saying, so-called bras and everything out, making a mockery of the women, saying, okay, this how she do it, I'ma be like that too, period, poo. You know what I'm saying? Shaking their butts, dressing like they half naked, like they selling their man butt. Wanting a man to ride down the Hershey lane. Uh. <laughs> and they making a mockery out of our women. Our women not supposed to dress like that, and that's not how our women are defined. But we try to tell our sisters that it's the one there, not the other. That's right. That's an excellent point, right? No Hershey man. Now, what's your nationality? What's your nationality? Black. You say African American. You say you don't know. I'm gonna show you nationality according to the Bible. I'm gonna prove it. Y'all believe in the Bible, right? All right, let's get it. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Bring that out. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord is speaking to his people, the Israelites, right? Through the mouth of Moses. He said, the Lord will bring you into Egypt again, right? But how? Which since? How did your ancestors make it here to America? How did your ancestors get here to America? Slaves. On slaves, but on what mode of transportation? Boats. On boats, right? Does that make sense? Let's bring it back from the top. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With ships. We find that we relate to this because oh, this is prophecy. Right. But how do we know? Because did the Israelites ever go back into captivity on ships within the Bible? No. That didn't happen. Right? You can ask your pastor, your minds, you can Google it. It didn't happen. All right? Because this is a prophecy. This is a book of prophecies. 
right? So you're bound to find some prophets speaking about certain prophecies. And this is one of the many. So let's read that one more time. Ooh. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. With ships, you're gonna go into Egypt again with ships. Egypt has a special meaning. We're gonna prove that it means slavery. Out the Bible. In the book of Exodus, chapter 20, and verse 20 reads that. Don't lose us, don't lose us, don't lose us, go ahead. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Out of the house of bondage. So what does Egypt mean? What does Egypt mean after what we just read? Because what were we doing in Egypt? What were the Israelites doing in the land of Egypt? Were we chilling? Was we playing 21? Just taking shots of liquor? Or were we working all day? Working hard, right? Let's prove it to you. Let's go to Exodus 5th chapter. Start of the 3rd verse. The book of Exodus 5. He said chapter, uh, chapter 5 verse 3. Chapter 5 verse 3. Chapter 5 verse 3 and it reads thus. Holy Bible. He's not lying. All right, bring it up. This is the book of Exodus chapter 5 verse 3. And they said, the God of the Hebrews had met with us. Let us go. We pray thee three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Lest he fall upon us with the pestilence or the sword. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye Moses and Aaron let the people from the works get ye into your bodies? And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many. He said, Get ye to your burdens. Go ahead. And ye make them rest from their burdens. He said, Make them rest from their burdens. We were doing burdens in Egypt. That's what you call a hard bondage slavery. Right? What type of burdens? What do you see when you go to Egypt today? Pyramids. Who built them? The Israelites. Right? We built them. That's hard bondage. Right? Plus, sweat and tears, we made them. Now bring out uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Because look, real quick, before y'all go, y'all know that the Hebrews did the pyramids, right? And if the Hebrews went on slave ships, like how he about to bring it out, we're going to break that down, and you're going to see, instead of the pyramids in that Egypt, the Egypt that he brought us here, those are the pyramids that you're looking at right now. All these buildings. That's right. All these buildings. Let's bring it up. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Are right, you going to go into slavery, bondage, captivity again, but with ships? And again, God said your answer came here by boats, correct? And when they came here, what did they do? What did they do when they came here? They built, right? As in the days of old, as in the days of ancient Egypt. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Have you all seen your homeland? Nah, none of us have. Go ahead. And there you should be sold into your enemies. And there in this foreign land, like Baruch said, you will be sold into your enemies. But who sold us into slavery? The white man, right? He did it. That's history. Go ahead. For bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. Right, for slave man and slave woman, and no man will redeem you out that captivity. So again, I have to ask, which people can read this verse and say, that's my history, that's my people? Which people? Black people. So we are black people. But as I mentioned before, we can't be black, because, of course, my skin is brown, right? We're all different shades of brown. Therefore, we can't be black. Who we have to be then? Like the brother said, we're the children of Israel because who is Moses speaking to? The children of Israel. Your ancestors went through that, right? Didn't your ancestors go through slavery here on boats? And then she come out the loins of your ancestors, making you a what? An uh, Israelite. That's one plus one, that's two. That's playing upon the tables. So if you're not black and African American, who would you really be according to the Bible? An Israelite. That's right. Thou says, you said it. But that's good, that's beautiful. But what do you do after knowing that you're Israel? You go smoke a cigarette in a blunt and hop on 2K all night. You learn more. You definitely learn more. Because the Israelites, they had a God. And when you have a God, you have to do what he says or sometimes you do what he say. Do what he say all the time and you try your best at it. Right? Hey, you all love God, right? How do you love him? Thank you.
How y'all love God? Doing the right thing. Give him flowers. Kind of dance for him. You pray. Yep, yeah, that's, that's one way you pray. Y'all got any ideas? Huh? You read the Bible like it's in Revelation. All right, that's good as well. But let's check this out. In the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 3, and it reads, For this is the love of God. This is the love of God. This is how you properly love God. Y'all listening? This is how you love God. That we keep his commandments. No, I played Xbox. That we keep his commandments. Fat blunt. We keep his commandments. Break the Sabbath. We keep his commandments. We keep his commandments. Do our people know the commandments? Do our people really know the commandments? No. If they did, you wouldn't see us getting shot on the news. You wouldn't see us getting arrested by the police every single day. Our incarceration rate wouldn't be at an all-time high if we were keeping the commandments. You said what, brother? We wouldn't hate each other. Y'all ever walk past your own brothers and you feel kind of tense? Like you on guard, you gotta like, kind of ball up your fists, kind of nervous. That's a curse. You think the white man go through that? When you walk past his white uh, friend? No. He does this. How you doing, buddy? He does that. The Arabic man, they say, I'm licking. That one more, well, yeah, they say all the lake is bacon and salami. They say all that wickedness, right? Oh, I got one more. Go to Deuteronomy 2854 so we can land it back off that to prove that, right? This is an actual curse, an actual factual curse out the Bible, right? A lot of people they walk by they say, Ah, oh, this is boring, whatever. I ain't learning nothing. This is your culture, your heritage. Bring it up in the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, verse 54, and it reads, So that the man that is tender among you, that man may be your uncle, your brother, your nephew, your grandfather, he may seem tender and sweet and delicate towards you, give you a couple of dollars here and there, but what? And very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother. What shall be evil toward his brother? He's going to have an evil eye towards his own people. That's why every time you walk past your own people, you feel kind of tense. You got to be on guard. You got to be on 10. Your antennas are up. You don't feel that way when we walk past a white man. You don't feel that way when you walk past an East Indian man. You feel like, I beat his ass. Whatever. You ain't really worried about it. Say if, like, you get a, say if like you get a direct deposit on your car or your bridge car. Is you going to the gas station around 12 in, at night in the morning? Or this old saying? You better get home before the street lights hit you. Or when your people leave from your crib, hey, be safe. Hit me up when you made it home. Heather, Larry, Akbak, Nakbak, they don't have to worry about that. But we do. That's right. So the point is, we have an evil eye towards each other. That's what today, today in time, they call that black on black crime. That's evident, right? It's, it's, it's plain. But it's more in that verse. It's still one verse. Check this out. And toward the remnant, I mean, uh, and toward the wife of his bosom. And toward the wife of his bosom, right? We're the known people, we're the number one people that's known for having domestic violence amongst each other. Go ahead. And toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. No, stay in company. Which he shall leave. In the command. Which he shall leave. Play basketball. Which he shall leave. Who's known for leaving their children? Which demographic? So called black man. Is y'all fathers in your household? That's good. What, oh, see that? Y'all fathers in your household? Nope. Hey, it's not a coincidence that all of our fathers down in our house. That's what you call a curse. Go down the street. You'll find some more black men whose fathers isn't in our household. That's an actual curse. Now look at the East Indian family in the communities. They got their grandfather, their mother, their son, their daughter, their grand grandson, their great granddaughter. We have the whole family tree walking before you. You see it with the white man. Everybody has their family intact except for us. But when we do see our family intact, right? Hey, that's a beautiful thing. That's nice. That's comely, right? But once you have your family intact, what's the next thing you have to do? Keep the commandments. And being the man of the household, you have to raise them up according to the scriptures, right? Now you can tell them some wise proverbs, things in the streets, X, Y, and Z, but you have to teach them the commandments, how to serve God. Because guess what? What's going to keep him out of trouble, brother? What's going to keep you out of trouble? Is it a, a Glock? Is it a Glizzy going to keep you out of trouble? Sweet, is that going to keep you out of trouble? No, keep the commandments. It's easy. 
This society they push for wickedness, smoke the weed, sleep with his girl, walk down the streets at 12 o'clock at night. And you try to do all manner of wickedness, that's our people be dying. But what does he say in Ecclesiastes 8 and 5? We're gonna close this out for y'all. Ecclesiastes 8 and 5, sharpness or whoever got it. I got one back. Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 5 real quick. Hold on, brother, before you go, the last one. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 5, it reads, Whosoever keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. For every evil thing. So keep up the commandment, so feel no evil thing. So what? So feel no evil thing. You're not going to feel no evil thing if you keep the commandments. Once you start keeping the commandments, and the Lord's arm is around you. You're going to have the angels surrounded about you. If you keep the commandments. Y'all know a few commandments? Not steal, kill, no, those are the plans. That's easy, right? But what about pork? What did the Lord say about pigs and swine? You said what? Come here, say it on this mic, brother. Little Can I eat pigs? You heard that? Right, bro. But we're going to prove it to y'all. This is Leviticus 11, chapter in the seventh verse. The Lord said, don't eat pigs. And you heard out of his mouth as well. Where you hear that from, brother? Church. Uh, <laughs> that's the one out of the, you know, one good thing they told you. That's rare. That's rare. They might be Israelites there. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, Verse 7 and it reads, And the swine, though he divideth the hoof and be cloven footed, yet he chose not to cut. He is unclean unto you. Put a little bacon so He is unclean to you. That pig is unclean to you. Right? That pork, that pork, what's the, uh, the pork chop, damn bacon, they all the ham, the ham hocks, pig knuckles, pig snout, that's unclean to you. Pepperoni? Our people love it though. And guess what happens when they keep eating them over the years? Diabetes. Right? They gotta go. They gotta walk like this. You wanna deal with that for your life? No. You get high cholesterol. What you say, brother? Come here. You, they gotta hear it too. Come here. They gotta hear it too. <laughs> We're trying to love our brothers over here. They get worms in their body. They get worms in your body. Right? Because it's parasites in a pig. pig. Pig is a nasty ass animal. It's a slime, disgusting, it's filthy. If I can think of new words, hey man, I'll tell you. So no more pork in your fork. Is that something you could do? Are you going to do it in haste? Make 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 readiness to do it, like do it right now. After hearing what the Lord said, don't eat pork. Are you going to question the Lord? Are you going to tell the Lord, maybe? No. That's good, because if you tell your kids to do something, hey, you don't want to hear maybe. You don't want to hear, ah, you want, yes, yes, Father, yes, Mother, yes, Sir. Uh, hey, how you Heavenly Father feel? Right. He said, God should not eat pork. Hey, you better say nothing but calm. Yes, Lord. Right. I want more. Right. Okay. Why the best of the sea creatures under the sea? In the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, Verse 9, these shall ye eat, all are in the waters, whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat, and all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, all that move in the waters, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. See that? You like shrimp, crab, lobster? Yeah. And the Lord said, don't eat it, though. Right. <laughs> oh, the Lord said, don't eat it. <laughs> right. How you feel about it, though? You want to say yes, Lord, or maybe? And whenever, whatever your answer is, think about you know, whatever you tell your kids. What you want to hear? You want to hear a yes. Right, so after that verse, what you going to do? You going to work on it or you going to do it? Y'all yeah, you said it, That's right? Cool. Heaven and earth is witness to this very day. The angels around you, hey, the brothers heard you, your wife, hey, your sons, hey, everybody heard you. But this knowledge, you have to raise up your family and tell them as well. Because what does it say in the book of Sirach 27 and 3? What does it say in Sirach 27 and 3? Somebody be, somebody hurry up and bring that out. See, see what the most I did? Bring out Job 11 and 14. Most I smacked that weed out your hand. That, you see, you see that? He kind of did that. 
Bring it up. It's the book of Sirach. Sirach chapter 27 and 3. Right. Unless a man hold himself diligently in the fear of the Lord. Unless a man hold himself diligently in the fear of the Lord, go ahead. His house shall soon be overthrown. His what? His house shall soon be overthrown. You want your house to be, not your actual house. The Lord can do that, but it's speaking about your house with people that dwell therein. Right? Your house is going to soon going to be overthrown. So when you're not keeping the commandments and your skin start acting up, that's because of you. You're supposed to be the, the image, right? That your kids should follow after. That your wife should follow after. Right, uh, you know, in the book of Job, chapter 11, verse 14, if iniquity be in thine hand, hey, that iniquity was in your hand. You like smoking, right? Yeah, you like smoking. But that, 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 that's the sin, though. That's iniquity in your hand. Put it far away. And let not wickedness dwell in thy tabernacle. And that's beautiful because the Lord kind of smacked it out your hand and put it far away. Right. You chased after it though. You chased after that thing. Are you going to are you going to throw it on the ground and kind of step on it? You, nah, nah, for the Lord. I will for the Lord. All right, so let's let's see it, brother. Now, brother, again, we can say keep smoking to destroy your lungs. I don't give a damn. We could be moving in that spirit, but no, we want you to save your lungs, save your tabernacle, and serve the Lord. So with that being said, are you going to take out that little roach? And they call it roach because it's nasty. You're going to take out that roach, just put it on the ground, and step on it. Just thug you on it. I can Come help on, you brother. Out. I can help you let, out, let brother. Go. Let's talk. Come on, brother. You can do it, brother. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. Let's go, brother. Let's go. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. All right, put it down. Step on it, brother. All right, all praises, all praises. Hey, that'll give you lung cancer. Now, what about the roach? Right. We coming for you, brother. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. Put that. It's Come on. Brown. I saw somebody spit right there, brother. Come on, brother. I saw somebody spit right there, brother. That's that was on the ground. That was spit right there, brother. You gotta throw that away. Throw it away. Throw it away, brother. Throw it away. I'm gonna wash you. We're gonna wash you throw it away. Go ahead, brother. Come on, brother. That was on the ground. We love you, brother. That was on the literal ground. We love you, brother. I saw so many kids spit right there. So many men spit right there. You gonna put it back in your mouth? Oh, see that? That's a good point. Homosexuals kind of spit over there too. <laughs> See that? Now you put that back in your mouth, you know, now it's a spit on you. Yeah. That's, that's somebody's DNA on your lips. Yeah, bro, you got to yeah, see that? Throw it like a brother. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. And it's good that you throw it away, because now it's not going to know long as well. Come on, brother. Just throw it away, brother. Come on, brother. Not for, not for us, but for God. For the Lord. Forget us. I don't give a damn about me. Do it for the Heavenly Father, brother. Do it for the Heavenly Father. Do it for God. You love God, right? You love God, brother. Throw it away, brother. Come on, brother. Come on. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. Throw it away, brother. You got to encourage him to throw it away. Throw it away. You say, baby, throw it away. You're going to destroy your lungs. No, brother, you gonna throw that away? Bring out First Kings eighteen twenty-two. Bring out First Kings eighteen twenty-two. All right, brother. We brought out the precepts. We're gonna show you this one as well. In the book of First Kings, chapter eighteen, verse twenty-two, and it reads this: The king Asa. Fifteen. You got it. It's the book of First Kings, chapter eighteen, verse twenty-two. Check this out, bro. Then said Elijah unto the people. Elijah said unto the people, because hey, there's nothing new under the sun. Throwing it away. Oh, all right, bring it up. Then said Elijah unto the people, I even, I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but but all prophets are four hundred and fifty men. Let them therefore give us two blowouts and let them sleep. Start at verse 20. First right. Kings 18 and 20. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel. Say, how long will thou be having two, two opinions? 18 and. Oh, you can kind of down there. You can jump down to. You can 
the 18. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18 and 18. And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou in thy father's house, and that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed by Allah. Now therefore sin and gather to me. It's 20 to 18. Yep, 20 to 18. All right, brothers, check this out. Okay, okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. What, what? It's the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18 and verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long has ye between two opinions? How long are you going to have two opinions? You said you believe in God. It's kind of hard. You can't throw that away. You kind of got two opinions right now, bro. How long hold ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. If the Lord is God and you believe in him, you got to follow him, right? Go ahead. But if but all, then follow him. Hey, but if you believe in Satan and everything Satan is with, such as weed, smoking, hey, then follow him. You can't be between two opinions. You got to follow God after your whole heart. Bring up Deuteronomy 6 and 4. You have to have these laws in your inward mind. Right? We're not lying to you. We could be, you know, doing thievery and smoking drugs, trying to commit adultery. We are here trying to love our brothers. One more, one more. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Thou shalt what? With all thy heart. Shall what? Shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart.